Special Operations, Covert Ops, Espionage, The Team House, with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Operation, I mean, we kind of kicked butt and took names on that one. And they eventually left, or you know, wherever it was around the world, there was always stuff going on. Could, you know. could we get into that, Faz? I'd really like to hear about the Stinger Missile Program, the, the CIA's covert program in Afghanistan. Well, a- actually in Pakistan, but directed into Afghanistan. Um, about, you know, how that came up on your radar and how you got involved in the program. Uh, well, hmm. you know, uh, let's talk in the third person. Um, I'll tell you, I tell you what I heard. Okay. Let me just tell you what, what I've learned about that. Um, you know, the Russians invaded, um, there were a number of ground branch guys that were, uh, involved in trying to prevent the air war from continuing because, uh, it was, it was the, uh, it was the thing that were killing the Mahajadeen and any, any other support that was going in there. They had a pretty good ground game going, uh, but between their hind helicopters and their bombers and their fighters, uh, they, those things were making a mess. And I think, from what I understand, uh, the Hein helicopters were just notorious for putting the fear of God in anybody. I mean, even though the Taliban, I mean, not the Taliban, the Mahajadeen loved to stand up on rocks and yell Allah Akbar, and they were great fighters. Um, you know, once the, the United States was given approval to get uh, run clandestine operations in there, and I think books have been re- written about it, um, then the agency got involved, but it got involved uh, in a really a, 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 a small unit of people. And initially, um, the blowpipe was deployed, mm-hmm. and there were three guys. And we'll leave there. I mean, I won't tell you who they were, but those three guys uh, had a. They went in and were trying to deploy the the blowpipe, which was a wire guided missile system, and. Um, and the Schwartz brothers out of England who were producing that, they, their, the electronics on the package just kind of, it was, they were failing quite, quite miserably from time to time. So that system in itself uh, just wasn't going to uh, do the damage that needed to be done. So uh, somebody uh, within the agency uh, said, hey, uh, you know, I hear there's this General Dynamics has got this new weapon system called the Stinger Missile System, and um, maybe we should think about deploying that. And then uh, I think Milt Bearden, Milt was the COS in, uh, in Islamabad at that time, and uh, Ren Stillo was, uh, with AF, uh, was with Near East Division, and he was spearheading uh, some things. And so he reached down to uh, SAS and said, hey, is there anybody there that could kind of go tell us if this system is worth it? So they, from what I understand, they sent somebody, and uh, they got trained down in uh, El Paso. Uh, The problem was uh, that, you know, in the Stinger uh, training, there's a big dome, and, uh, you know, you get inside the dome with the the trainer, and you're probably familiar with it, and, uh, and you track and you learn your skills there, but uh, we couldn't fly 30 Mohajadeen to El Paso for many, many reasons, keeping it quiet, a budget, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. so I'm told. And uh, so uh, Ren uh, had a conversation with uh, somebody in SAS and said, uh, hey, uh, what do you think about the system? And that guy um, told him it's a great system and think they should consider it. And, uh, they had to go out and find the money for it. And there was a brief moment there where, uh, they Congress and a few other people just weren't buying off on it. Mm -hmm. They, they were really just going to just drop the program thinking, well, we'll look, we can use sticks and stones and slingshots and, you know, British infields and maybe we could pull it off. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, somebody, got 
uh, a really smart idea uh, that cost them about $15.75 worth of training materials and said, uh, you know what? We can teach them to use this weapon system uh, if we just use these simple things. And um, so um, the agency sent a guy over um, to a training site at a non-disclosed location and they set up this really, really simple uh, mechanism where they uh, took a, wa a line and they ran it from one building down to another one and they stuck a little airplane with a flashlight in the back, which would produce the heat with some weights on the bottom. And they uh, would stick a mooch up on the top. And uh, at the, when he was given the, the go, he would just let it go and it would actually just kind of move down the, the rope, right? But in the background, it looked like an airplane flying in the, uh, in the sky. So I hear that the theory behind that for that guy was that um, he believed that if you could just keep people uh, put in their memory what they needed to see every single time, they would know uh, how to fire. So on the stinger, there's three reticles, you know, and uh, you need the, the, when you're looking through one of the reticles, you need the airplane to be a certain size. If it's too small, that's too far away. And if it's too big, bigger than the reticle, that's too close. The missile won't have time to arm itself. Uh, but if it's just right, um, and that's what you see, then you could fire the weapon system and it would give the missile time to activate. And of course you could hit your target. So if you repeat this, and this is the image that they get in their head, it doesn't matter if they have a third grade education, uh, they're going to see that and they're going to know, well, if I see it and it looks like that, then I can shoot. And, um, and so I understand that, believe it or not, that boys make fun. It really wasn't Charlie Wilson's war. It was somebody else's. And through $15 and 97 cents or 79 cents, whatever it was, that little amount of money is what taught them to become excellent uh, Jedi masters of the Stinger weapon system, I guess. And then uh, I hear that they deployed, uh, deployed a number of guys and uh, they gave them cameras so they could record, you know, their first uh, shots so they could take that back to the division and they could take that to uh, Congress and say, hey, look, it works, it works. And uh, I understand the, most of the footage on those cameras at least 75% of the footage was just the mood jumping around and joking around fireplaces and dancing. And, and I think, you know, like the last third of the footage was actually some, sh some things being shot down actually. So, yeah. you know, you gotta, you know, you put, put cameras. You, we, I don't think anybody expected that, but um, from what I understand after that, um, it got deployed there and then it got deployed down in Angola here. And, um, and that guy kind of faded off into the shadows and, um, so, you know, probably to this day, he never realized, realized how that an entire nation would be brought down to its knees with $15 and 97 cents. Yeah. So <laughs> that substantially changed the course of the war there. What's that, David? I said th that substantially changed the course of the war. Where, 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 was that training those stingers and, and everything? And so I hear, yeah, I did. And uh, I think one day if I ever meet that guy, I'll shake his hand and say, wow, did you have any idea that, you know, that was going to be David slaying Goliath or that the, that history would be made or that one person could change the course of history like that? And uh, I don't know what, he, what he'll say, but, you know, I look forward to meeting him one day. Well, I, I look forward to meeting him too one day. And I, I just have to... I want to unpack this a little bit because I don't think most people realize that this person started that the I, I've even been told this person brought the first stinger shipment was actually to Zavimbi in Angola rather than Afghanistan, like most people think. You know, I, I, I heard something like that. The timeline's a little confusing. I, I probably could 
have some conversations with a few guys and find out exactly. Uh, I heard a lot about Savimbi. I, I heard he was an incredible general um, and, uh, and always on the front lines. It was, it was sad to hear when he, when he died in that, that one battle. At the end, uh, I don't think that surprised a lot of people that it would happen that way. But uh, uh, I hear he was a remarkable man. I heard he was a big guy. And, um, you know, I, I hear his people loved him. And, um, yeah, and I heard they were pretty successful there, too, because I think I think the Russians might have been down there in Africa, too. Or the Cubans, the Russians supporting the Cubans, yeah, the Cubans excuse me. Yeah. Well, yeah. were, were there any shoot downs with, with Stinger systems in, in that part of the world? Good question. I'd have to, I'd have to ask somebody. Yeah. $15. And 97 cents. And 97 yeah. cents. The pennies are important. You never know. Those pennies add up. Basil, getting, yeah, David. getting back to, uh, to first person, when you showed up to Ground Ranch, was, was, was that a surreal experience for you? And having been a, a Marine Corps officer,